The man who benefited most from the mutiny sparked by Severus Alexander's unwillingness to fight the Germans was Maximinius Thrax, who the mutineers elected emperor in March 235. Being a Thracian and a common soldier, the sources were keen to present Maximinius in an uncivilized and barbaric terms, but there's something even more striking about his depiction, his sheer size. He was of such size that men said he was six inches over eight feet in height, and his thumb was so huge that he used his wife's bracelet for a ring. Other stories were reported almost as common talk, that he could drag wagons with his hands, move laden cart by himself, that if he struck a horse with his fist, he loosened his teeth, or with his heel broke its legs, that he could crumble stone and split saplings. While the story Augusta is known to exaggerate, Herodian also comments on his significant size, while Maximinus' coinage depict a man with a prominent brow, nose, and chin, which could all be symptoms of gigantism. The oppressive rule of Maximinus Thrax raised opposition across the Roman Empire and in Africa. The exactions of his tax collector sparked a rebellion. This saw a group of rioters kill said tax collector and then looked to proclaim the governor, the eight-year-old Gordian, as emperor. Initially, Gordian thought that these youths were there to kill him, and indeed they did threaten to, but only if he refused to accept imperial elevation. The entire populace of the city quickly assembled when the news was known. The youths proclaimed Gordian Augustus. He begged to be excused, protesting that he was too old, but otherwise he was eager for fame and did not enter into the office without some personal satisfaction, choosing to risk the future rather than the present danger, and thinking that it was not so terrible a thing to die, if need be, amidst the imperial honours. This revolt of Gordian would be a strange mix of utter failure and ultimate success. In accepting his elevation to emperor, Gordian I had his son share the imperial throne with him as Gordian II. Both men were accepted by the Senate and many of the provinces due to the unpopularity of Maximinus. However, the Gordians were attacked in Africa by a certain Capulianus. He had always been hostile to Gordian, even in private life. And so when Gordian dismissed him, he gathered the Murs together and with an irregular force of them came up to Carthage, people of which came over to him. Nonetheless, Gordian desired to hazard the chances of war sent against him his son, now well advanced in years. He was then 46 years old. But in military affairs, not only was Capulianus the bolder man, but the younger Gordian was less well trained, placed at a disadvantage as he was by the luxurious life of the nobility. When they joined battle, accordingly, he was beaten and slain. Upon hearing of the death of his son and the approach of Capulianus, Gordian I hanged himself. The joint reign of the Gordiani had lasted just 22 days. With the deaths of the Gordiani, the Roman Senate was left in a quandary. They had already cast a die in favour of revolt against Maximinus Thrax, but that had failed, and now the emperor was en route to punish them. Rather than capitulate, they decided to continue the revolt, electing two of their own number to serve as joint emperors, Pupienus and Balbinus. Pupienus had held many army commands, appointed prefect of Rome, he administered the office with diligence and enjoyed among the people a good reputation for his understanding nature, his intelligence and his moderate way of life. Balbinus, an aristocrat who had twice served as consul and had governed provinces without complaint, had a more open and frank nature. After their election, the two men were appointed Augusti and the Senate awarded them by decree all the imperial honours. Some in Rome were not overly pleased with this development, manipulating the people and the Praetorian Guard to force the imperial duo to appoint the grandson of Gordian I as Caesar. The murder of Maximinus Thrax by his own soldiers at the Siege of Aquileia left Pupienus and Balbinus as undisputed co-emperors, but with that power came the responsibility of actually ruling the Roman Empire. But there was dissension. Balbinus scorned Pupienus as being humbly born, and Pupienus despised Balbinus for a weakling. And this fact gave the soldiers their opportunity for they knew the emperors at variance could be easily slain. So when many of the soldiers and palace attendants were busy, the emperors remained at the palace alone. They made a rush at them, stripping them both of their royal robes and loading them with insults. They dragged them from the palace. Thence, after handling them roughly, they slew them both and left them in the middle of the street. It had been less than two months since Thrax's demise. The joint reign of Pupienus and Balbinus, an experiment in senatorial rule, had lasted just 99 days. The youngest Roman emperor to rule in his own right 
The reign of the 13-year-old Gordian III was dominated by military campaigns against a new rising power in the east, the Persian Empire of the Sassanids. Initial success saw him claim a triumph, but a second campaign came to grief. But when I first became established in the land, Gordian Caesar drew together an army from all the land of Rome, Gothia and Germany. And to Mesopotamia he came against Iran and against me. And at the boundary of Mishik, there was a great face-to-face -face battle. Gordian Caesar was killed and the army of the Romans was destroyed. It must be said that while the Persian account is perhaps to be preferred, it is not perfect, with the Roman version making no mention of this defeat, presenting the campaign as successful. Instead, they have Gordian III killed through the machinations of his Praetorian prefect and eventual successor, Philip the Arab.